Danny, let's start with the, the latest new signing then, Miguel Freckleton. Uh, what will he add to the squad? Uh, well, he's <clears throat> he's someone that's been on the, on the radar, so to speak, for a while <clears throat> in terms of a left-sided defender that you're aware of as a team, especially because, you know, his, uh, his uh, parent club is just down the road. So you see a lot of them, especially pre-season. So I think in the game against the pre-season, you saw a calmness <clears throat> and a balance like the manager likes to have on that, on that left side uh, and also can defend, knows the league, uh, you know, he's been on loan before. So I think, I think <clears throat> what he does bring it, it's not new to him. Even in training yesterday, he just fits straight in and, and sometimes you... Not necessarily here, but other clubs I've been at. You get you get lads from the from the bigger clubs and the Premier League clubs, and it takes them a while to bed in because it's not the same training facilities and, and infrastructure, etc. But we go straight away, just just bed down straight on with training. He's here to prove a point. He's here to to help us. He's here to play some games, hopefully. Uh, and also, obviously, with with Lawrence going to Crawley, he gives us uh, another really good option at at, at left side centre half or anywhere on that left side defensively. Yeah, m many people are wondering whether he's sort of come in as sort of maybe a backup type of player who, who might start here and there. How, how do you see him slotted in? I certainly don't think he'll, he'll look at it that way. I think he, he, you know, speaking to me, he wants to come in and play straight away. Now, whether that happens or not, we'll, we'll wait and see. And he understands that we're having, having quite a good uh, season so far. So it's not as simple as that. But yeah, <clears throat> you know, he's uh, he was in and around Sheffield United's team early on in the season, albeit, you know, they, they were shorter players, etc. But even so, uh, Paul Heckenbottom must have bought something of him to, to have him that close to, to his team. So he's certainly not going to come down to the National League and just accept or be happy, should I say, just to sit on the bench and be a backup. So he'll certainly be, be looking to, to play in our team, wherever that may be, anywhere on that left side of the fence. Uh, but like also say, you know, are we winning? The manager doesn't like the changes his team, uh, whether we, we do change for certain reasons tomorrow, we'll wait and see, but no, Miguel, what I've what I've seen of him so far, I spoke to him, he's a very focused lad, uh, who's had his loans and, and, and had a little, it's his toe in it really, and now he wants to really make a name for himself. Is he a little bit versatile then, do you think he might be able to uh, play left back if needed? Yeah, I think, you can, I th and I think that uh, a lot of players, you know, should should and can be able to do that. You know, I think Tyrone did it for us, uh, albeit briefly, second half the other week against, against Oldham and, uh, and and held his own quite comfortably. So I'm sure his, his, his preferred position is the left side centre half. I suppose him coming in, not that the manager and us, we, we often do it, but you can go to a three at the back if need be, if you're trying to see games out. So it just gives you another player in the building that's very, very good, uh, balanced with his left foot, uh, young, hungry. Uh, and, and hopefully he's uh, he's going to help us get in that get in that sort of position where uh, where we want to be, which is top of the league sooner than later. And he's the second player that you've got on a season-long loan from a Premier League club, along with uh, Harry Tyra. What, what do you think that says about you know the style of play, maybe, and the club itself that you're able to attract, and, and that Premier League clubs are, are trusting you with their young stars? Yeah, and I think I think that's that's a really good point. I think that you know they're both lads that are are not sort of uh, not highly thought of, and they just want them out the door. You know, they're lads that they've got real high hopes for at Everton and Sheffield United, respectively. So, yeah, you're right. It, it's it's a compliment to us as a club, and you know that that the, the team that they they've obviously done their research on us, haven't they? They're, they're loan managers and, and and decided that both would would be. Would have would be a good fit for us, and vice versa. Uh, I think you see from Harry so far, he's a confident lad. He's obviously disappointed. It was had no clean sheet so far, but I think he's played ever so well. He's got they think very very highly of Everton, by the way. And at Sheffield United, obviously the location helps for the lad. But uh, I think they saw pre-season that we're, we're a good football team. Uh, and of all due respect to the league, you know we're not on we're not a typical non-league club in terms of the infrastructure and the support base, and that does make a big difference. You know if you're coming from being around a team like Sheffield United with, with 20 odd thousand and you're suddenly playing in front of four or five hundred, which he's done before, by the way. Uh, so he'd, uh, he's earned his stripes. So now you, you know, you're coming somewhere seven, eight, even nine thousand every week. It's great for a player. It gives you a buzz. You want to come and be part of that. So, yeah, I think it's a, a good compliment to the club, uh, but it's also a compliment to the players that they're not only willing, but really, really up for coming to help our promotion challenge. Yeah, yeah, good point. Is he, um, is he available for selection this weekend? Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, 
We are training on the way uh, down to Aldershot today at a training ground somewhere. Uh, uh, and we'll be leaving leaving shortly and it'll be on the bus and available for selection. Great stuff. And obviously going out the other way then, Lawrence Maguire, was that um, sort of a right decision for everyone really for him to go and get some games? <clears throat> like I said to you before, I think that we or I or you, anyone can't say to a player or anyone, you have to go and do this or you must do this or you, feel, you should feel like this. Every player and every individual's got a, a specific time and framework that they want to they want to work to in their career, you know, rightly or wrongly. And uh, Loz has been here for many years. He's a great lad. You know, lead two clubs come in for him on a loan till, till January, which which suits all parties. And, and hopefully, for, for the lads' sake, he'll go and play some football and help them in their challenge, whatever their ambitions are this year. Uh, like I said to you the other day, where when you asked about Rowie and Quasi, whilst you're doing all right in the league and doing okay, uh, those questions about those players get a little bit less. I suppose it's when certain things. Uh, are highlighted and you think certain players not on the team can can do to, can do better or add to it then and, and that's when debates happen which is what football's all about but for Lawrence I think that uh, it suited everyone it suited him most importantly uh, he's a good lad and I certainly wish him well for his loan period there Will you sort of assess the situation again then at, at the end of, of January whether to decide whether he, he could maybe come back into the group or whether he needs to stay out on loan Yeah I think that, that that's the whole point of it isn't it I suppose when, when you say a, a loan alone is to whatever date and obviously within that there's certain there's certain small print in that but ultimately it, it, it's January what have you and uh, then it is up to all parties to see how, how you've got on you know we haven't got a crystal ball and say what's going to happen or how he's going to perform how we're going to perform but at the moment we're okay we brought in Miguel uh, and hopefully we can go from strength to strength Older shot next up then tomorrow uh, unbeaten at home what are you expecting down there? Yeah, tough game. Toby Widrington was, was my manager many moons ago at, at Salisbury in the, when we were in the National League uh, a long time ago. Uh, and he, he certainly knows the league. He knows the level. Did ever so well with Kings Lynn before going all the shop. Did well at Salisbury when I was there. No, we were a very small club. Nearly took us in the playoffs. So he knows he knows how to get the best out of uh, out of a bunch of players. Uh, I wouldn't say a smaller club because all the shot aren't. They are a big historic football club, you know, for non-league level. So... Yeah, I don't mean that disrespectfully at all, but maybe one of the more unfancied teams to get promotion. He does well with them. Uh, but he's got some good players in there. Some good players. He's got good relationships with Brighton and Southampton, I think. So they get some good lads from them who've been released or loans. Uh, and like I say, you know, we'll turn up there and there'll be a big crowd and their crowd always get behind them like ours do. Uh, and I'm sure that they'll be, they'll be dressing themselves up as underdogs, which is fair enough because, you know, we're up near the top and their mid-table sort of area. So we have to be ready for that. Uh, but no, it'll be a very, very tough game. I don't think I'll do any interviews with you this year that I'll go, you know, it's going to be a really easy game or, yeah, we should, we should just go and win. There isn't there isn't any poor teams in this league where five, six years ago there was. You know, if we're honest, there was three or four teams that you just knew you were going to turn up and trounce. Not the case anymore. So we have to be on our game. After that really poor start against Hartlepool, we, we showed what we are all about. Uh, we want to go all the shot and do that from the first whistle, not ten minutes in. So it's a busy month, September, as well, isn't it? I think there's seven games, and then by the end of the month, you'll have played sort of a third of the season or so. Yeah. So if you if you can put your foot to the floor, you know, it's, it's a big month, isn't it? It is. It is a big month. Uh, and obviously, you plan and you, you look at the point tally you want and and what you're going to get. And obviously, the auction one was really disappointing because you go from a winning position to a drawing position to, to no points. And then after 10 minutes against Hartlepool, you're thinking... Can't have another game without no points. Come on, lads, and uh, and the boys really, really turned it on to, to get the three points in, in whatever, whatever means necessary. So, uh, yeah, you're right. I think it's important, and we all get carried away, don't we? Looking forward, or you know, forget that win now. I like to look at the league table after every game, uh, but I don't try and imagine what the league table would be like three or four games time. So, for the here and now, we hope we go to all the shot and win, and the two above us don't, and it'll be a lovely weekend. In terms of team news this weekend, have you got any uh, injury concerns? No. Uh, Mike Jones come off with just a little bit of a tight hamstring, but he's trained fully the last couple of days. Absolutely fine. Bailey Clements, the first time I saw him on the training ground yesterday, uh, with doing a bit of ball work, so he's getting ever ever closer, but, but too too early for, for the trip to Aldershot. Uh, apart from that, we're all right. Is Raheem obviously? Is he still sort of three or four weeks? Oh away? yeah, yeah. So, he'll be he'll be at least he'll be at least three weeks, Liam, definitely. Yeah, um, and in, in terms of tomorrow, then what what do you what do you want to see from uh, from your side? 
I think just want to see the sort of uh, identity I think that uh, the manager wants in his teams from the first whistle. Like I said to you a minute ago, uh, you know, we can look back on mistakes and, and, and not keeping the ball, but we can't start games like that. Uh, and we certainly can't finish games like we did against Altrinham. So there's things to be learnt. Uh, I think we've scored the most goals in the league, which is a great positive. But we want to we want to stop, you know, giving teams head starts. Not that Altrinham was a head start, but we gave them a, uh, a sniff. We gave Fylde a big sniff towards the end. And obviously, Hartlepool, we gave them the best start they could ever wish for. So as a team, and I reiterate that as a team, we need to, to get out there and make sure from the very first minute we're in their half, we're playing some good football, we get that early goal, then we get the second goal and, and at the worst ways we, we see things out for, for a 1-0 win or a 2-0 win. Uh, but it takes everyone to, to pull in the same direction, stick to the game plan. But yeah, I think good start's crucial tomorrow. I imagine the mood in the camp has been pretty uh, balancing this week given the dramatic comeback on, uh, on Monday. Well, it has been. It was similar, I suppose, to after the Dorking game where you think you've all, all thrown it away when it gets to three or in 97th minute and then... Quig scores to, to win us, and it's such a great feeling. And I said the other day to someone that if you could, if you before each game, if you knew that was how the game was going to finish, you'd take it because of the actual elation that you feel and, and, and sort of flows through your blood. But uh, during it, it, it's certainly not elation, is it? It's nerves, anxiety, a little bit of frustration. Uh, and I think we've just got to make sure now that uh, we had the odd one like that, but not every week. Just finally, uh, your favourite subject, uh, transfers. Obviously, the window does shut tonight at uh, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Um, are, you, are you aware of any interest or, or bids in your players going into the, the final hours? Yeah, we've made a bid for Mbappe. He's having a think about it. Uh, he's seen a local area, he likes the spire, and he's going to come down to his representatives later on. Uh, listen, it's one of them where, you know, I think Frex was a big one, especially with, with Loza going out. Uh, like I always say to you, there's, there's things like, like Mikel was, and obviously when you, he's on your radar, I'm not going to say to you like a month ago, as a lad at Sheffield United, we quite like, because it's nothing then, you're just looking at someone and he's on your radar. So there's obviously always lads that you look at and, and are monitoring, but at the moment, I think, you know, I'd be lying if I said we didn't have a strong squad, good squad, uh, some, real, some real strength in all areas now. People know their position isn't safe, uh, and that for me is great to spur people on to play to their maximum week in, week out. I'm Bathy Kid, sounds good. I'll have a look into it. <laughs> Cheers, Liam. Cheers, Annie. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you.